All right, it's 11.03 and we'll just let other people join us as they come in. So make sure everyone can still hear me. My name is Belinda Breidenbach. I'm the Environmental Assistance Coordinator here at the Idaho Small Business Development Center. And I wanna make sure that everyone knows about the Volkswagen settlement in that Idaho has funds available to replace older diesel trucks. So one of the first questions that comes up is people ask, what did Volkswagen do? And basically for a little nutshell of a background, they admitted to manufacturing 11 million diesel vehicles that were designed to cheat to pass the emission test. Um, the vehicles were actually emitting up to 40 times over the NOx limit. And NOx is nitrogen oxides. It's one of the five criteria pollutants which form smog, acid rain, and affect people's breathing. So, oops. Oh, I just keep going ahead, not behind. Let's see. Sorry, apologize. There. Yeah. So, what happened next was Volkswagen was caught and they settled the case. And each state is eligible to request a portion of the settlement money based on how many Volkswagen vehicles are in their state. And the money is supposed to be used to offset those excess NOx emissions from the Volkswagen vehicles. Now, Idaho has the opportunity to receive a total of $17.3 million, and 15% of that is for electric vehicle fast charging stations. The Volkswagen settlement's complicated. It's got multiple parts. I just want to let you know that there was one part where they had to buy back and terminate the leases of those vehicles where, that they had sold that didn't meet the emission standards. There's a second part that you may start hearing about this more called Electrify America, and Volkswagen is required to put in fast charging stations across the country, approximately every 120 miles. And then the third part is this Environmental Mitigation Trust, which Volkswagen is required to put $2.9 billion into, and this is where the state's money is coming out of. And today, we're talking about Idaho's portion of the plan that's been approved for uh, replacing trucks and buses. And just so you know, right now, Excuse me? Okay, um, this application round, there's gonna be about $4.8 million available here in Idaho for replacing diesel trucks that are in class four through eight. And there's limits on how much money that can be spent. And the basic thing to know is that there will be at least three years where this funding opportunity will be available. So, as you're looking at your diesel vehicle that you're thinking about replacing, there's a few questions to ask yourself. First of all, is it diesel powered? Is the engine model year a 1992 to a 2009? And is the gross vehicle weight rating over 14,001 pounds? So this would be a class four through eight. And I'll go into exactly how to determine those classes in the next slides. The other question after you've answered all of those three yes, is the truck that you have able to start and move in all directions and have all its operational parts? Is the truck used in your business operations? And do you have the title registration for each of the vehicles. So on the classifications, out of the DEQ application guide, explains the weight ratings and gives you a little bit of an idea of, 
you know, box trucks, delivery trucks, tractor trailers, fire trucks, dump trucks. I tend to like a visual representation better. So class one, two, and three are not eligible. And all of your pickup trucks land in those classes. So not pickup trucks. But when you get up to these larger delivery vans, furniture moving trucks, garbage trucks, trash trucks, um, dump trucks, cement mixers, and the way to tell your gross vehicle weight rating is there should be a sticker inside the driver's door and that number will be listed on there and you just need to check and make sure it's greater than that 14,001 pounds. So then continuing with the eligibility, government vehicles are eligible and non-government, your private business vehicles are eligible for this program. You can actually apply to replace up to 10 vehicles. And DEQ is going to select applications to award reimbursement for a portion of those. Now there are also some airport vehicles, train and port vehicles that are eligible for this program, but I'm not really going to go into those because I'm assuming most small businesses have trucks and not trains. So then the next thing to look at is your new vehicle that you want to purchase. The engine model year of it, basically for this year's round, has to be a 2019 or 2018 model. And the truck must be a similar size and used for the same purpose as the vehicle that you are replacing. And basically that replaced vehicle must be scrapped. There's a whole bunch of detail on exactly how, and I will be sending out the, the PDF of the slide so that you can read those details. You need to have the purchase order for that new vehicle going in within 90 days of when you are selected and receive an approval letter that you are going to be given this award. The purchase of the vehicle cannot predate the approval letter. So you have to wait to, to purchase or to commit to purchase to the new vehicle. And all projects must be completed within three years. This just helps cover you and the, the funding through the state if the delivery of that vehicle starts getting pushed off later and later. And then it's also very important to know that the funds are going to be provided after the new vehicle has been purchased, your existing vehicle has been appropriately scrapped, and all the required documentation is submitted to DEQ. And then the ownership of that new vehicle, you must keep it for at least three years. Also know that DEQ has reserved the right to come and check out your new vehicle and to confirm the documentation. And of course, you'd probably want to show it off anyway. So there is fine print. It's all out there in the, uh, the DEQ website. So the next big question is how much money can I actually receive back? And I want you to know this has been updated. When the application first came out, there were caps limiting the amount of money you could receive back. All of those caps are gone. And so, for example, if you were to replace your diesel truck with a new diesel truck, then you could get 25% of the cost of that vehicle. Basically, I'm calling it rebated. If you decided to replace with an all electric vehicle, you could get 45% of the cost of that vehicle 
rebate it to you. And just to get an idea of how much some of these vehicles cost, if we look at the largest, the class eight, the tractor trailer, diesel one could cost anywhere between 140 to 170,000. Compressed natural gas up to 230,000 and an electric 300,000. With a 45% rebate, you could get up to 135,000 back on that vehicle. If you were to get a local freight truck that cost you, let's say $100,000, you could get up to a $25,000 rebate. So you've determined that your truck meets the requirements. You really would like to uh, have a chance at getting selected for that rebate. So what's next is applying. Just realize the application does not guarantee funding. DEQ is going to review these and select the applications to submit to the trust fund. And the application deadline is January 31st, 2019, which is coming up very quickly. So now I wanna just quickly go through this application. So anything that might catch you, um, you can kind of take a look at so that this becomes very easy to fill out. Obviously, the name of your company, address, tax number, the DUNS code, if your business has one, if they don't, you can put in that you don't have it yet. You can apply for these online. They are completely free. So make sure if you decide to go in and apply for it that you're getting uh, completely free on that. And then who is the person that is going to be the representative from your business? And that's who um, DEQ would call to ask if they had any questions. And then they ask, are you submitting for just one vehicle or for multiple vehicles? And then which class are you in? And most people I'm going to assume are going to be in class six for the local freight trucks but there might be some in class in EMA one for the tractor trailer. Then you need the information about your existing vehicle, type, make, model, year, the VIN number, that weight rating, the fuel, and then fuel usage, annual mileage, the total mileage, and then the information on your engine. An attrition year is what was the year that you were planning on retiring this vehicle? So if you had been planning on retiring this vehicle in 2024, then that's what you put in. If you were planning on getting rid of this vehicle next year, you'd put in 2019. Then, you're going to have to decide what is the new vehicle you want. So you're gonna to need to go out, get some price estimates, get some bids on this new vehicle. And when you decide what it is that you want, have all of the information on the type, make, model, the engine, and how much it's going to cost. And then this total funding requested and percentage requested you'll see this is gonna come up in that scoring matrix. And so we'll talk about that then. But when you get that bid, that cost of what the new vehicle is, remember that you can't commit to buying it yet. So then if you have a non-road vehicle that you are looking at, um, similar information, there is some engine tier and there's going to be a slide at the very end that um, I'll be able to send you in in the list of slides so you can determine what your engine tier is if you are applying for a non-road vehicle again for non-road now in yellow highlighted incomplete applications will not be evaluated so make sure that you put an NA if it doesn't apply to you and if you have any questions, make sure that 
you contact uh, the office at DEQ, you can contact me to make sure if you don't know exactly how you're supposed to answer. So the first question, what is the likelihood that the project will incentivize you to continue to transition to alternative fuel or electric vehicles? So you may have a fleet that's starting to transition and this will help you continue. It may be something you didn't consider until now. Just write, write a narrative on that. Now, question number two can seem a little daunting. It's asking you about the populations that are gonna benefit from this project and are there sensitive populations. And it suggests this EJ screen. It's an environmental justice screen tool from EPA. Now, you can either write a narrative explaining um, how you think it's going to impact. It could be something like our trucks uh, and our fleet yard is next to an elementary school or a daycare or a senior citizen center. And so it's going to reduce the amount of emissions that are being breathed by the, that population. But if you want to use the environmental justice screening tool, I have just a couple slides to just give you a heads up of what it looks at, like. This is their website. And when you go on, you'll zoom in the map to the region in which your business is. I've selected the Treasure Valley. And then you'll go here and add maps. You wanna make sure you compare it to the state. And then you'll see we have environmental indicators, demographic, EJ indices, and a whole list of pollutants. So as you kind of play around with it, you're looking for where it comes up with those darker shades of sensitive populations. And the environmental indicators you're going to look at are all air pollution ones that would affect you with a diesel vehicle. So PM 2.5, ozone, the diesel PM, the cancer risk, respiratory and traffic proximity. Things like lead paint, wastewater discharge, Superfund, those really have no bearing on diesel emissions, so we don't need to worry about those. And then on the demographic indicators, the index is a combination of all. Some of these other ones have been listed in the question, and it's good to know that the populations under five and over 64 have much more respiratory sensitive populations. And as you look at that individually, you might find that surprising some areas that have a much higher percentage of very young or elderly. And then you can also look under the EJ indices, which incorporates all of those demographic indicators into each environmental. Basically, you want to just play around with it and see where you have the most sensitive population that you can explain and say, this is who's going to benefit. Question three becomes easy again. Where's the project located? Where is your business? What routes do you normally take? Or what region do you normally drive in? And then this fourth question, applicant experience. It's basically asking, not only have you just gone through the bidding process and, and purchased a new truck before, but what do you have set up on the experience of your office staff? Have you gone through the procurement process? How long have you been doing that? How simple is this going to be for your business to go through? And then the timeline, of course, the purchase order is going to be uh, required within 90 days after um, the applications are selected. How long are you being told before you'll receive that vehicle? 
how long do you think it'll take to scrap the old vehicle, and then how long to get all that required documentation in to DEQ. Then project costs, and you'll see coming up here, electric vehicle charging infrastructure. If you select an all electric vehicle, then you can also get money to cover that charging station at your business. If you are going for an alternative fuel vehicle, then it does not allow funding for the fueling station for that. So in this case, for um, an alternative fuel vehicle, you might already want to have that infrastructure in place and you are in the process of converting that fleet. And then the next question tells you that yes, you can get the funding for electric vehicle charging station covered in addition to the vehicle. And then is there anything else that you didn't think came up that you would like to tell them? There is your opportunity on question nine. And finally, your name, your title, and your signature. So now that you've filled it out, the next question is, what's my chance? And you'll see on the DEQ website, they also have the scoring matrix. So we're gonna look through the scoring matrix real quick. One of the first things is what county are you in? based on these air quality priority counties and NOx emission priority counties, you can get far more points just based on where you're located. Then that information about the old vehicle that you had and the new vehicle is going to be put into a little program and come out with a cost per ton for that NOx reduction, and then all the applications that will be received will be put in order, and the top third get the highest points. Now, here's that kind of odd question on voluntary funding. So you've added up all of your points, you have applicant experience, and you're seeing how close you think you're going to get to 100. And you really want to get this award for this rebate, but you think maybe you need a, a few more points. You can say, well, instead of 25% 20 per, back, I'd be willing to take only 25, 20%, 5% less and increase the amount of points that I'm getting. It's something you have to consider and play around with. But you can add this up, see how close you guess you might come to 100 to give yourself an idea of how good a chance your application has, which is much nicer than dropping it into the black hole. <laughs> and the application website is here. You can. Um, Simply also search on your web browser, um, Idaho, DEQ, and VW, and this page will come up. The application and the application guide seem to have a lot of trouble with some of the browsers, especially Chrome. So if you get any type of error message, try using Internet Explorer for some reason. That is working better. and very important. The deadline is January 31st, and it's estimated that those award decisions will be announced in April, which is a pretty quick turnaround, which is very nice. So, one final thing I want to tell you about if you cannot afford to replace a vehicle now that is just not in the company budget, there is a different program out there that you can look into. 
It's Diesel Emission Reduction Act option for class five through eight. So class four vehicles are not eligible, but it's a diesel retrofit. There's several different mufflers that can be put on to replace low rolling resistance tires, aerodynamic foils. These changes will improve the fuel efficiency of your trucks and 100% of the cost is covered by DEQ. So just be aware that other option is out there. And if you have questions, my contact number information here at the Idaho Small Business Development Center and I also have the contact information for Michael Brown at DEQ who is running the VW diesel replacement program. So are there any questions? Hi this is Ann. I was just checking to see if you could put the deck on the on Center Rice's library. Yes. Yes, we will do that. Thanks. And Michael Brown has his hand raised. Yep. Can you hear me, Belinda? Yes, I can. Okay, very good. Um, there are a couple things on the application I wanted to sort of point to. Um, and one of them is kind of a significant change. If you could go back to um, where you have question number six okay and this is this is where um provide the project cost here one of one of the changes that have that we've made to the application is that um while here we say that we'll need a bid for anything exceeding twenty five thousand, we really gonna need um a bid for any individual expenditure and so the way this is worded now um, says provide the project cost below for any um, field, blah, blah, blah. Uh, detailed cost estimates from selected or potential vendors are required for all individual expenditures uh, attach a copy of the manufacturer vendor bid estimate for each vehicle replacement and so while before we indicated that it was for anything over 25,000. We really need it for any, any vehicle expenditure. Okay, so I will make sure I get this slide updated before I send that slide deck out to anyone. Thank you. Okay, one other um, point of clarification is that we did have language on there that said um, that we wouldn't consider incomplete applications and that's really not accurate. I mean, if there's a field where information is missing and it seems pertinent, I'll get in contact with whomever is listed as the point of contact on the application for clarification to, to get whatever information is needed. Great, thank you. And then one last thing is I've noticed um, a trend in the applications I've received so far where existing vehicle information is provided but the new vehicle uh, equipment information is not included and so it's pretty critical in evaluating the application to see what it is that you're proposing to replace the vehicle with right because that information would be needed to determine that cost per uh, ton of NOx reduction exactly okay all right, and Jim? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Good, I have a couple questions. Um, I, uh, what about the, the year, you said 1992 or newer to 2009. I know they made a lot of changes in mind, but there's a lot of older vehicles out there still running that need some replacement. Is that a hard and fast? And also the replacement, it has to be new, is that correct? So uh, Michael Brown could probably speak to why it can't go past 92, um, older than 92 for that. Um, and then the engine model year has to be either for this year's round, uh, 2019 or 2018. And Michael, do you want to speak to that? Sure. I mean, as far as um, whether or not those dates are hard and fast, yes, they are hard and fast. 
in terms of answering the question as to why, I can only speculate that they want to replace vehicles that have a sufficient existing useful life to have a benefit of reducing emissions. So if a vehicle is basically going to die in a year, they don't really want to replace that uh, because you don't have the potential to offset the emissions um, compared to a vehicle that has more useful years left. And so that's determined based on however that's determined. I don't really know the reason why, but they picked those dates and those are simply dates that the trust will fund. So they are hard and, hard and fast. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any other questions? I had a question. How many applications have you received so far? I've received about four. Okay. And while I'm surprised by that, um, I fully expect most applications to come in within the last two weeks or so. All right. If there are any more questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to fix the, uh, the question six slide, and then I will uh, send these out and we will put them on to the center IC as well. And Belinda, I'll just also offer up that the um, corrected application is on our website for download. Yes. And also just to let people know, if you have any questions,